But let's stand. We're going to open in prayer and get right into worship. Hallelujah. The Bible says, let's enter his courts from praise. Amen. Hallelujah. We need to enter in worship and giving him praise.
many knows we got to receive yes, the word? Amen. <laughs> hey, Amen. Have you ever talked to somebody just in the natural sense, talked to somebody, and they just really wasn't paying no attention? Oh, yeah. Amen. You could tell their mind was somewhere else. That's right. Amen. I, I would I, I I have to confess. I've been sitting in church before, my mind being somewhere else. Amen. I've been here, been there, done that. Things going on at home, things going on at work, everything just, the battlefield's in the mind. you got to get outside of that and say, mind, calm down. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're going to focus tonight. Paul said, I buffeted my body. Hallelujah. He tells it, straighten up. Slap it around every now and then. Say, straighten up. Hallelujah. I heard it put this way. I can't do nothing about you, but I should be able to do something about me. <laughs> Amen. I can't make you straighten up, but I should be able to make me straighten up. Sit down and listen. Pay attention. Uh, but most of all, receive from the Spirit. Amen. Uh, I don't believe that we need to just come in here just to get head knowledge, but that's the only thing. The Bible says renew your mind. I'm 100% in agreement with that. But I believe you receive that in your spirit. Hallelujah. And you just let it roll in your spirit, and it'll start renewing in that mind and I'm telling you it's it's not just about reading but let the spirit of God reveal it to you tonight amen so we're going to turn the service over brother LJ if you go ahead and come on and uh, we're going to get right on into the word praise the Lord God is good amen all the time um, you know, I, I had something that the Lord had been dealing with me on, dealing with me personally on for about a month or so. And I thought, you know, next time I preach, that's what I'm going to preach about. But you ever got a red light? I was going to, that's what I was going to preach on. And all of a sudden I had a red light. God said, no, stop. That's not it. So God has a word. Every time we come here, God has a word, whether it's through the Pastor Janice, Pastor Jerry, uh, whoever gets up, God has a specific word. He has a rhema word, like the pastor was talking about Sunday. He has a rhema word for you. Get a hold of it. Mix it with faith. Amen. And it'll, it'll change our lives. Um, and Ezekiel, and how many know we're living in the last days? It's, 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 this thing's wrapping up, okay? Ezekiel 38, it actually talks about Russia. And it talks about how Russia is going to come down and, and invade Israel. And I got to thinking about that. Look at what they're doing right now in Russia. Amen. Russia's invading Ukraine. They're out on, they're out going around starting to invade stuff. So um, we need to be aware of the times that we live in. And uh, turn to Matthew 24. I want to say one little thing about this, and then I'm going to kind of go into what the Lord's given me. Matthew chapter 24. We all know, a lot of us know Matthew 24, where Jesus was talking about the end times. And I just want to read a couple of scriptures. Matthew 24, 4 through 7. Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceives you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. How many know we're hearing wars? Wars everywhere. But the most important part of that is that next word. He said, But be not troubled. Be not troubled. Amen. Very important. Be not troubled. We're going to see these things happening. We are, I truly believe, we are the generation that's going to see Jesus come back. Amen. I believe that. I mean, I could be wrong. But I believe that. Everything that the Bible has, has prophesied, it's all come to pass. Um, and let me keep reading. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. I mean, no, I, I never would have dreamed what happened with COVID-19 would happen. I mean, it shut the whole world down. Talk about a pestilence that just shut the whole world down. It was crazy. I, I mean, now me personally, we didn't really shut down much. We still came to church and we still work and we still done things. But we've done that knowing that God 
had our back. God is our protection. We can go through these things. See, these things are going to happen. Corona, the coronavirus is not the last one to come. There's many more that's going to come. Amen. But we got to know that we are protected in Christ. Amen. Um, let me keep reading. Nation shall rise against nation. Uh, all these things are beginning of sorrows. Uh, anyways, let's get forward. My, my point in reading that is we got to understand, and I think most people here, we understand that we're living in that time. And like I said, COVID-19 is just the beginning. Now turn over to Isaiah chapter 60, verse 2. One other scripture, and then I won't go to my main thing. Brother Keith, can you pull up Isaiah 60 and 2? <clears throat> It says, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. How I many know we're living in a dark world? Gross darkness is happening in this world right now. Gross darkness, but, there's a but right there. The Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Amen. The, this world is going to get dark, but hey, like Jesus said, don't be afraid. Don't be troubled. Don't be worried because God, his, his light is going to shine upon us. Amen. Now, what I want to really get into is in the book of Psalms. And it's Psalms 91. How many know what Psalms 91 says? God told me, he, right before, I believe God always prepares His people. He prepares His people. If you if we'll listen like to the messages that the pastor is bringing forth, He will prepare us for things to come. Amen? The Bible says the Holy Spirit will show you things to come. Amen? So I got um, right about three months, and I've shared this before, but... About three months before Hurricane Michael hit, God brought a book into my hand that was the power or the prayer of protection, Psalms 91. And it was a whole book on Psalm 91. And for three months before that, me and Tanya was both reading this book and studying in it. And then Michael hit, and we was in our house. And, buddy, we was quoting Psalm 91. Them trees started shaking. Amen. And it, it, God showed me. He said, hey, I'm preparing you for the things to come. There's pestilences. There's things that's going to come on this earth. And we need to be prepared. We need to know what we have, what we can stand in as a child of God. Amen. We have certain rights and privileges. But, you know, if you don't know them, they can be yours and you not operate in them. I heard a story of a guy that come over on a boat from another country and he took the last dime that he had to pay for the ticket. And he paid for the ticket. He went in there and all he had was some cheese and crackers that he brought with him to eat. And this whole like week long journey on this boat going over to another country. And he would sit over in the corner and he'd eat one cracker a day because that's all he had. And towards the end of the trip, the guy that, that runs it comes up to him and says, sir, why didn't you ever come in the dining hall and eat? He said, well, I didn't have any money. This, this, all I had was my cheese and crackers. He said, well, sir, the meal come with the ticket. He starved that whole trip just eating cheese and crackers when the meal come with the ticket. Amen. So there's things that come with your ticket. Amen. There's things that we need to know about that come with our ticket. Psalms 91 and verse 1. This, this psalm is un. I would say unbelievable, unreal, un, uh, it's, it's just not of this world, I guess you could say. There, it is so rich. There's so much here that you can never, never even, even get into all of it. But, <clears throat> and I, this is something else. You know, the Bible is the inspired Word of God, right? We know that. And, but, you know, I've heard that the Scriptures and stuff are not inspired, but... I, I believe that the Holy Spirit had a little something to do with the chapters and verses too. Because it's funny, what do you call when you get in trouble? 911, right? Psalms 911. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. What's, like I said, our emergency number is 911 when you get in trouble. Go, not go to Psalms 911. Um, the Jewish Talmud, which is a, it's, it's a book that the Jews use, the rabbis use, and they said this in that uh, it's, it's kind of like a history book of theirs, but it says that the rabbis, now these are people that don't have the Holy Spirit, they, they, but they was the Jewish people, right? God's people. But they say that 
they take Psalms nine or Psalms ninety one and they read it over demon possessed people. Okay, they read it over people that are sick. They read this. They do that. See, but they don't understand that we're the ones who have the substance of Psalms ninety one. Amen. But even the Jewish people, the people that this was given to, understand the power that's in this one psalm. How many ever heard of John G. Lake? John G. Lake said that Jewish rabbis say if one will quote Psalms 91 seven times, faith will be in your heart. And they quoted over sick people and over that. Now, we don't do it as a, if you do it this time, this will happen. We do it as a revelation. We do it as a, as Janice was saying earlier, uh, uh, a relationship, a closeness with God. We quote the scripture because we're close with God. Amen. Yeah. But still, that's what John G. Lake said. He said, and this man, this is a man that, that, that went to Africa and seen the, the bubonic plague actually die in his hand. Yeah. And we've seen that story, or read that story, okay? He said, this is what John G. Lake said. He said, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And y'all know the story. They put the, the, the stuff that come out of their mouth in his hands and looked at it with a microscope and it literally died in his hands. Think about that. Yeah. My goodness, somebody... I haven't, seen, I haven't seen anybody put the coronavirus in their hand and it die yet. But you know what? I'm believing that if I get coronavirus in my hand, it's going to die. Amen? Because the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. We're so focused on the law of sin and death. And yes, the law of sin and death exists in this world. But it's kind of like the law of gravity. Right? It's always there. The law of sin is there. You go get on top of this building, jump off. I guarantee you, gravity is going to pull you to the ground very fast. Right? Gravity works. There's no, no doubt about it. But do you know that every single day, every single day, in airports all around this world, the law of thrust and lift overrides the law of gravity. And these big, gigantic planes, you see these big planes and you think, how in the world is it? Because they have a law that overrides that law. See, we have the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, which overrides the law of sin and death. Amen. We got to, we got to know that. You got to know it. You got to believe it. You got to, like John said, you got to say it. You got to speak it out of your mouth. Amen. But John G. Lake said this. He said, it don't work if you're operating in fear. He said, fear shuts you down. He said, fear, and this is actually what he said. He said, fear causes you to absorb the negative that's around you. Wow. My goodness. I don't want to be in fear. And God has given us Psalms like Psalm 91 that we can look at and see the protection we have. And any time, anytime fear comes at you, you got something to say to that fear. Amen. Amen. Fear is believing the devil, devil, devil. The devil, there's a V, not a B, y'all. Fear is believing that the devil is more able to hurt you than God is able to protect you. Think about that. Don't operate in fear. I ain't giving the devil no credit. Amen. I'm not going to let... And let me tell you this. The devil is not he, he's not all knowing and all see he don't know what you think he only knows what you say so even if you're if you have fear come at you shut up don't say it don't say it because when you say it he's like oh oh i heard that i got it right but if you keep your mouth shut or when you open it quote scripture don't quote i'm scared don't don't talk fear don't talk fear fear will shut you down we are in dire need more than ever before for protection from God in these days we live in. Amen? Like I said, there's, there's plagues, there's pestilences, there's wars, there's, there's all kind of stuff that we need and God wants us to have because He's given it to us, protection through these things. But first, it's like Brother Billy preached, you know, the, uh, last time he preached, you got to humble yourself. You gotta humble yourself and say, God, I need help. See, a lot of us we don't ask God for help because we feel like, well, I can protect myself, or I got my nine, you know, I can protect myself, or uh, and I've said this before. Well, I'm a good driver, and I am a good driver, I believe. But it's not me that I'm worried about. It's the other nuts that's out there that I need protection from. Amen. I, I, I'm not the one that's out there drunk. There could be like Uncle Don and Janice, just a random a drunk person hits you. You got to know. You got to have God out there protecting you and, and, and protecting you from these things. And even and now understand. 
When you have protection from God, it doesn't mean things won't happen. Because things are going to happen. But God will bring you through it. God will protect you in it. Amen. Uncle Don and Jess could have been gone today. They could have not been here. Not been here. But because they have protection. Amen. God protects His people. Amen. They believe it. Amen. <clears throat> God wants to... I love... Uh, Y'all was here last Sunday. Awesome message by the pastor. God wants to suddenly deliver us. Amen. I, I, that was an awesome message. And let me say this real quick. Me and Brother Keith had a suddenly this week. And I was thinking about it earlier today. Me and Brother Keith had got a call from the auto, from the insurance companies and they're auditing our insurance, right? And so we was having to go through trying to send them this, that, and the other. And then all of a sudden, I, I was at work today. I think it was today. When did today, Keith? Yeah. Today, I was at work and I got a call from the guy and he said, they canceled the audit. And I was like, hey, praise God, that's a suddenly. Amen. Amen. That's a suddenly. That was some completely unexpected. Amen. Let me tell you. Because we was, I thought, I was, and, and, and you know, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have did it. But I'll be honest with you. I kind of let it start bothering me. Yeah. I started thinking about, man, they're going to need this. And they're going to want bank statements and this. And all that's kind of mess. Right. Come on, Thank you, Lord. But suddenly, I got a text message and said, hey, we're good. Don't worry about it. <laughs> hey, man, God wants to suddenly deliver us. That's why he give us, that's why he give us this book. That's why he give us Psalm 91. Amen. Now, I want to I show you something real quick in the Hebrew. Hebrew, my goodness, the Hebrew is such an amazing, amazing, uh, I mean, just amazing uh, uh, language. Um, if you don't know, learn some of it. Listen to some people that teach on it. Because, man, it will bless your socks off. Let me tell you, because this book is so much deeper than what we see on the surface. Even going into the words and the names, and it's so deep. But, um, and let me say this, a lot of times... Yo, there's a show uh, they're called Lost in Translation, I think. But um, a lot of times we lose stuff because our English language does not come close to the Hebrew language, okay? So we we lose things. That's why anytime you study God's Word, take it back to the original. Amen. Like Pastor was saying, that word suddenly, we thought it meant one thing, but then you take it back to the original, it means something totally different. So we've got, we, we lose stuff in translation. Um, in the Hebrew language, there's three different letters, or three different words for love. Well, we just say love. But see, we, we group it all together. You know, I love my wife. I love my car. I love a cheeseburger. And we just group it all together. You know, God's language, it separates things and it gives you details. And it, oh, it's, just, it's just amazing. But anyways, the first word in Psalm 91. Now, we see he that. But actually, he that is not there. The first word is dwelleth. Okay, so it starts out with the word. Um, let me find it here. Yeshav, first word in that in that scripture, and you know what Yeshav means? Sit down, sit down. My goodness, God's saying, sit down. The work is done. Sit down. We got to sit down, man. We get so busy trying to do everything and trying to do things for God and try to take care of ourselves. And God's saying, baby, sit down. Just sit down. Amen. What did Mary do? She sat down. She got before Jesus and she sat down. You know, uh, um, what did Jesus tell the 5,000 to do before he fed them? He said, sit down. Have them sit down. Amen. Do you know that in the temple, the old covenant temple, in the Holy of Holies, there was no chairs because the, the, the priest was never finished. Their job was never done. They could never sit down. But the Bible says that Jesus sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, right? His work is done. So we've got to sit down. We are seated with Christ is what it says in the New Testament. We're seated with Christ. Position before blessing. Position is important. Man, I find myself sometimes... <sighs> Just not sitting down. <laughs> you know, I, I, I got to do this. When something bad happens, you know what the first thing Satan says to you? What you going to do? What you going to do? I'm going to sit down. Every 
time something happens, I'm going to sit down. Because the work is done. I can trust God. So sit down. Amen. We need to sit down. In the, in the book of Deuteronomy, uh, what is it, 28, it's got all the blessings. Blessed in the city. Blessed, blessed in the country. Blessed in the field. Blessed coming in. Blessed going out. We love that, right? Do you know what the very first thing Deuteronomy says? He will seat you on high. That's the very beginning of all the blessings. He will set you on high. Amen. And how can you be any higher than being set in Christ? So when we're set in Christ, we have the blessings of Deuteronomy 28. Amen. We need to learn to sit down. Sit down. Now, the first letter. I thought this was awesome. I just learned this recently. But in Psalm 91, the first letter in the psalm is the Yud. Okay, Yud is the hand. You know, the Hebrew language, they don't have numbers. They have, uh, I mean, they don't have uh, numbers. They have letters, and each number is a letter, and it also has a picture with each, with each number and letter. But it's Yud is the first word, or the first letter. Yud is the hand. But at the very end, the last word is Yud also, or the last letter. So it's like... A set of hands. God said, if you get in Psalm 91, there's a set of hands. There's one at the beginning and there's one at the end that protects you in every single thing that you do. Amen. That just blessed me. I thought, my goodness, there's a hand. And you know what? What did God, what did Jesus say? He said, my, you're in my father's hands and in my hands. So we're in the hands. Amen. <laughs> that, that just blessed me. Amen. The first letter is you and the last letter is you. God's got you from beginning to end. Amen. And also, Psalm 91 has all three persons of the Godhead in this one song. Amen. It actually has five different names for God in one song. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret, uh, secret place of the Most High. Most High, that's Elion. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's El Shaddai. That's Shaddai. I will say of the Lord. Lord, that's Yahweh. He is my refuge, my God. God is Elohim. The creator, the one that created everything that you see today. Elohim is the creator. In Genesis, it says God created the heaven. It's Elo Elohim. But also one that gets missed out is the very last word. I will show him my Yeshua. It's the very last, last word in there. And that's Jesus. Yeshua. So from beginning, God at the beginning to the end, man, God's got you covered. God's got your back. Amen. He wants to, to take care of us. He wants to bless us. He wants to, to, to make every step you take. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to read through it in, in a minute. We'll get through it. But um, he wants every step that you take to be protected, folks. We, we're living in, in perilous times. We need protection. I need protection. Amen. I need protection every day. It says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's talking about closeness. Closeness. It's not, it's not like, well, you just take this book and you find some things and you just quote it and God has to do it. No, God wants a relationship and He wants closeness. He wants, like Janice was talking about, the one that can hug you from the inside. He wants closeness. He wants to get you to get just as close and as tied up to Him as He can. What did Jesus say? How often I would have gathered you under my feathers as a, as a hen does her chicks. But you would not. We have to be willing to come under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen? And there is no safer place on this earth than under His feathers. Amen? Hallelujah. Don't trust you to protect you. I said that a minute ago. Amen? God is the only one that can put us at the right place at the right time. Amen? He can put you... I heard a story about a lady that uh, was overseas and she was in a motel and the motel got bombed and she was a, she was a woman that believes the Word of God and she, she was... Uh, I think she said she was actually studying on Psalm 91. But um, she was walking through this, in, through this motel lobby and uh, 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 drive-by... Not drive-by... Uh, a, a car bomb or whatever come in and bomb the place. 
and she just happened to be right behind a big gigantic pylon when it exploded. She said she seen body parts going past her. Had a couple of scratches. That was it. Because God knows how to put you. I ain't smart enough. You ain't smart enough to put yourself at the right place at the right time. Amen. And we've got to humble ourselves and realize, God, I need you every second. I can't put myself at the right place. I can't do that. Amen. Because he will not force it on you. He won't force it on you. If you choose not to, he'll let you do it. Amen. If you choose to say, no, I, I'm not going to focus on the Lord or I'm not going to read the Scriptures, he, he, you have free choice. Amen? If He didn't stop Adam, He ain't going to stop you. Amen? He didn't stop Adam. The secret place, and I want to say this, and I don't know how, if I can really get into it, but the secret place, I've heard many different people talk about, some people talk about the secret place is a special place where only people who pray eight hours a day can get to. Well, us people that get out and work every day, we need the secret place more than them people that's in a closet somewhere. No offense to them if you spend time in the closet. That's great. But the secret place is in Christ. And I think I can prove that through Scripture. I don't know if I have time tonight because I want to go through my other things. But it's in Christ. You remember in the Old Covenant, they had the Ark of the Covenant, right? It, the Bible says that Christ is, our, is the perpetuation or the mercy seat. Now, if you ever looked at the Ark of the Covenant, it has two cherubim on both sides with wings coming up. This is the picture. This is the picture, the secret place. Christ is the mercy seat. We're in Christ under the wings. So when you're in Christ, you are in that. You are in the secret place. Don't let somebody tell you you got to pray 8, 12 hours a day to be in the secret place. No, you accept Jesus Christ. But at the same time, I've heard people say, well, I know such and such. They was a Christian and bad things happen to them. Yep, that's what Satan wants you to do. He wants you to look at all the bad things. I don't know what they believe. I don't know if they believe that scripture. I don't know if if they walk. I don't know what they was believing. But I do know what the Word of God teaches. And I'm gonna stick with it. Amen. I'm gonna stick with what the Bible teaches. <clears throat> And also, one other thing on that. In the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant, when this was written, how many know the church was a secret back then? What did Paul say? He said the mystery. It was a mystery hidden in times past. So to them, it was a secret. They, they, they didn't know where that secret place was. Today, we have the fulfillment of the secret place. And God's saying, hey, you're in it. Believe it. Confess it. And you'll see it. You'll begin to walk in it. You'll be able to see that happen. Amen. Verse 2 says, I will say of the Lord. My goodness, that's so important. What do you say? What do, what do we say? I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Yes, amen. That's fine. What, do you say? what do you say? My goodness. Some people say God sends sickness. How can God protect somebody if they're believing that God sends sickness? How, how can God help them when God's saying, I need you to say of me this, and you're saying of me this? Amen. amen. You know, how, how can... There's so many, and I, I just, I don't know, it, it, it hurts. It's aggravating. People that, that blame God for doing things that God never had any hand in. That would be like, that would be like me taking, that would be like me taking Caden, since he's the little one. I would say Dominic, but he's bigger than me now, so. But I'd take Caden, since he's small, that would be like me saying, okay, Caden, come out here to the road. You see this road? It's a dangerous road. Now, I want you to lay on the ground behind the car, and I'm going to back over your arm to, pr to show you that you don't need, you need to stay away from that road. Cars are dangerous. And let me back up. You go to jail for that, right? But we accuse God. We accuse God of doing things that we don't even, uh, you know, wouldn't even think a normal parent would do, much less a good parent. You know, my goodness. What do you say? Mm. Life and death, the Bible says, is in the power of the tongue. Amen. What do we say? What do we say? It says, He is my refuge. I'm going to say, He is my refuge, my fortress. Refuge speaks of small things, small attacks. Fortress is huge. So whether you're in a small attack or you're in a big attack, He is my fortress. Amen. But as I said before, it's not automatic. 
It has to be believed, and you got to say it. Faith operates by your mouth, by your tongue, by you saying what you believe. Amen? It's not automatic. We need to, we need to memorize Scripture. So important. So important. Memorize Scripture so that, because you don't always have your Bible with you. But like I was talking the other day, uh, the Lord had me on Psalm uh, 23 and just, just quoting. I mean, it's, Psalm 23 is very easy to memorize. And then throughout your day, you can chew on it and you can, just, you can just speak that word. And speaking this one, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High, you ain't got to say it loud. You can just be chewing on that Scripture all day long. Amen? We need to memorize Scripture. Now, I want to show you something else that blessed me. <laughs> this just blessed me so good. So good. God is so awesome. His Word is so amazing. There are 20, I think it's 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet, right? Do you know that in Psalm 91, 21 of those 22 letters is used? There's only one letter that's not used. And it's the seventh letter, which is Zion. Okay? Now, Zion, the picture of Zion is a picture of a sword. How many know the Bible? What does it say in the book of Revelation when Jesus comes? He's going to have what in his mouth? He's going to have a sword in his mouth. The sword is the word. Amen? So as you begin, to, it, the, that word is not in there. That one word, one letter is not in there. But as you begin to quote that and you put it in your mouth, it becomes a sword. That Psalm 91 becomes a sword coming out of your mouth that will cut Satan every which way, every which direction. He has no defense for God's word. Amen? And when you put it in your mouth, it becomes a sword. Amen? And we've been learning, Sister, Sister let's talk about the word of God the sword of the spirit amen it's, it's, it's all in there amen? amen put Psalm 91 in your mouth it becomes a sword amen. amen it cuts away sickness it cuts away disease any scripture that you get and put in your mouth it becomes a sword he, uh, he was wounded for our transgression food for our niggers the chastisement of our peace was upon him with his stripes were healed that is a sword coming out of your mouth that begins to cut the problem is a lot of times it may take that thing being cut more than just one time to get rid of it. But you got to keep cutting. How I many know if you go to cut down a big old, one of the, one of the big old trees out there, uh, uh, the ones that are like 100 foot tall in Yellowstone, you know, big ones. If you, redwood, there you go. If you get out there with an axe, you can't just go whop it, it's down, right? Sometimes things are bedded in there deep, and it takes chopping and chopping and chopping and chopping and getting the Word of God and just keep chopping, keep chopping that, chopping that thing with the Word of God. It's going to give. It will give. God's Word will never give. But the problem, the sickness, the disease, it will give in. Amen. If we don't give up and quit, as the Scripture says. Amen. Verse 3. Surely, I love that. Sure, not not maybe, not nah. surely. Same word that says surely he has borne our our sicknesses and diseases. In the same way, surely he will deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. Now that's like a a, a, a bird. You know they put a snare down to catch a bird. I mean, no, Satan sets little snares. He sets little snares to try to catch you. But God said, surely I will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and the noisome pestilence. Now, um, Satan says things like this. It's okay to look at it once. He's setting a trap. It's okay. Get your phone. You know, nobody's around. If you just look at it once, it ain't that big a deal. You know. He's setting a trap. He's setting a trap and he's trying to trap you. Amen. We need to be wise to his, his schemes and his things that he tries to do. Amen. Um, give me a second. Ah, okay. As Brother Don says, nobody likes to draw a preacher, right? <laughs> Long, long after, years and years and years from now, we're going to be saying that same thing. Thinking about Uncle Don, so I don't like nobody likes to drive preacher. Amen. If the Lord tarries, that is, he may come back. Amen. Amen. Okay, where was that? Verse 3. 
All right. <clears throat> now, he shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings thou shalt trust. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. Amen. Under the wings of the Almighty. My goodness. No safer place on earth you can be than under the wings of the Almighty. And I'm going to throw something in here that just blessed me. I thought about, y'all remember the woman, the little woman with the issue of blood? And she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. You know that in, in the Hebrew or in the uh, Jewish tradition, they have their prayer shawl. And actually, the bottom of it is called the wings. And I got to thinking about that. His wings. That was his wings. And I always wondered, how did that woman have faith? And I know it says she heard about Jesus. But what did she hear? And I got to thinking. If you go back to the Old Covenant, it says when the Messiah comes, he'll have healing in his what? Wings. So she knew the scripture. She knew the scripture. She said, if that's the Messiah, all I got to do is touch his wings. Amen. She touched his wings and she was made immediately whole. Amen. That just blessed me. Hallelujah. So that's just a little side note. Anyway, he's true shall be your shield and your buckler. Amen. Your shield and your buckler. He wants to protect you. Sister uh, uh, Linda showed us some shields last time when she preached. These big gigantic shields, they covered your whole thing. Yeah. Covered your whole, uh, your whole body. Amen? God doesn't want us in terror. He wants us protected. You know, times have changed so much. Um, just in the last 30 years, I remember when I was 17 years old, um, I had moved down to Florida and stayed, you know, of course, you know, I was a minor, so I moved in with Daddy and Janice and lived there with them. And so I decided to move back. Well, Daddy couldn't take time off work to take me back. So you know what he did? He went and bought me a Greyhound bus ticket. And at 17 years old, I got on a Greyhound bus and went from Panama City, Florida, all the way to Tennessee. That was the longest ride on the bus. Let me tell you something. But you know what? Even at 17, 16, you could do that back then. You could get on a bus and you could travel. You could, you could do that and, and, and not have to worry about your family. But today, my goodness, it's almost like we can't even let our kids go outside and play. We can't even let them play out in the yard because of... Terrorists, basically. Terrorists. People that try to bring terror. People that try to hurt people. But I thank God. I thank God that God has given us His Word. And He's given us a shield that will protect us. He's given us a buckler that will protect us. Amen? Amen. Let me keep reading. This, thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. Okay? Do you seriously think, and I got to think about this, I don't think he was just talking about an arrow, no. right? Think about an arrow. What is an arrow? Something that flies in the air, yeah. right? Today, our arrows are missiles. There's missiles that can travel like, I don't know, some crazy, like 30,000 feet. They can bomb you from far away. God's saying, hey, I got you back. <laughs> Even if it's a missile, I got you back. I want you to be protected. I've got your front. I got you back. Amen. It says um, pestilence. What does it say? Pestilence. Um, oh, I've already skipped that. No, I haven't gotten to that one yet. Okay. Nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Okay. Pestilence that walks in darkness. That's things like the coronavirus. You can't see it. And God's saying, hey, I got you back. I got you. Um, also, not just that, but you ever seen a person that, would, that worked out all the time and they was healthy and, and all of a sudden they just dropped dead? You see that on purpose. Satan does everything he can to make sure you see that so he can put that little thing. See, they was healthy. You see what happened to them? They just fell dead. You ain't as healthy as they are. You can just fall dead. He tries to put that thought in your head. But God wants you to know that even if it's a pestilence that walks in darkness, he's got you. Amen? Amen. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at the right hand. 
but it shall not come nigh thee. Amen. Hallelujah. That's that's good there. Yes, good. I quote that one just about every day as I'm going to work. A thousand can fall at my side and, and ten thousand at my right hand. It will not come nigh me. Amen. Any any war uh, any war bus. Anybody like studying on wars? I kind of like studying on wars. But there was a war um, at the beach of Dunkard. I want to give you a little story real quick. It was the British in World War II. They was at the beach of Dunkard, which faces Great Britain. There was like 400 troops. And the Nazis was, were on their way in to wipe them out, right? And then all of a sudden, out of the blue, all these boats shows up. And it basically, it was a bunch of fishermen that come in and save these guys before the Nazis were able to get to them and destroy them. And it is said that, uh, and actually the miracle of Dunkard, you can read it, it's, it's very documented. But they said this, that a lot of the soldiers that was there, <laughs> and you understand this if you're in a dire situation and you've got Nazis coming at you. But they started yelling, Psalm 91. They started yelling. They said that these troops started yelling Psalm 91. Hey, when you get in a bad enough position and you're to be killed, hey amen, and you can yell Psalm 91. And all of a sudden, like I said, all those boats come out. And they took them and none of them died. Um, there's also another story, and y'all may have heard this one. Uh, this one, I've, I've heard it from a couple different people. But they, the Nazis were bombing London. And they bombed this whole road. But there was one house standing. And there was this very elderly lady come walking out of the house after the bombs and everything was over. People come out to check on her and said, you know, wh what happened? You're, you're, you're the only house that didn't get bombed. And uh, this is what she said. She said, I believe God. And I seen in Psalm 91 where it said, a thousand will fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand. It will not come near me. Right. And she said, I also seen the scripture that says the God never sleeps nor slumbers. Yeah. So I'm just going to go inside and go to sleep. So the lady went inside and she was sleeping in the middle of being bombed in her house was the one house that didn't get bombed. Amen. That's faith in God. That's all we need, folks. Faith in God. Just believe it. He said it. Okay, I'm going to bed. Yeah. Amen. That's what we need. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 8. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There we go again. Habitation. It's where you stay. You get there. You sit down. You get in there close to God and you sit down and don't move. There shall no evil befall you. Neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling. Listen, this is not something I'm reading out of a fairy tale book. Yeah. This is God's word that he's given us. Yeah. I believe Psalm 91 is a psalm for the day that we live in today. Right. Amen. We need protection. Our kids. I can't go with my kids every day. I can't go to school with Dominic or Katie. I can't go with Emily everywhere she goes. But you know what I can do? I can speak the blood like John was talking about this morning or this evening. I can speak the blood over them and I can quote Scripture. I can quote God's Scripture. Amen. God's Word works. Amen. If we'll put it in our mouth and add faith to it. For He shall give His angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear thee up on their hands lest thou, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Can I throw some in real quick right here? You know, and if if you said this, I've said this, but I, I'm starting to see that it's not true. I mean, no, if we say something and we start saying that maybe it ain't quite right, we got to go with the Bible, right? But I've I've said this, I've said this many times about Satan quoting Scripture, and Satan can quote Scripture, but I've studied the only there's only one place I found that Satan quoted Scripture. And that was in the, in the wilderness with Jesus. That was the only place. And this is what he quoted. This is the scripture right here. Give his angels charge over thee. Now listen, he messed it up. He didn't quote it right. He messed up because, and I tell you, I believe it was on purpose, because it would be counterproductive for Satan to give Jesus the word. Amen. So he's got to mess it up. He's got to leave parts out. But let me tell you this. I believe. I got thinking about this. So Psalm 91 is the only place I find Satan quoting Scripture, and it was Psalm 91. And I believe this, that that's the reason that is, 
is because that's what he's heard for years and years and years from God's people. It's been quoted to him so much because it's the psalm of protection. He's heard God's people saying that he shall give his angels charge over me to keep me in awe. He hears it so much, he's like, ah, it probably drives him crazy. But that, I thought that was good. Don't, don't, I don't believe Satan knows as much as maybe we think he does sometimes. Amen. Amen. I lost the where I was at. He'll give his angels charge over you, keep you all the way. They'll bear you up on their hands, lest the dash thy foot against the stone. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon, thou shalt trample underfoot. Now listen, it switches. It switches. It switches right here. It goes from him talking to now God talking. And God says, because he has set his love upon me, Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. Set on high in Christ. Amen. We're set on high. He shall call upon me. I will answer him. How many times you hear people say God didn't answer? No. He said in his word, if you call upon me, I will answer. I will be with you. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with him in trouble. He didn't say trouble wouldn't come. Like, you know, the other scripture. Weapons will be formed, but it will not prosper. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. This psalm covers you from every single direction. From the top, it says his feathers shall cover you. From the bottom, it says you'll tread on lines in the air. From the left, from the right, no, no, uh, a thousand will fall to your side, ten thousand to try hand. You're covered from every single area. It says no plague will come nigh your dwelling. That's your family. He covers your family. It covers you in all seasons because he says nighttime, daytime, darkness, noonday. No matter what the time is, we're covered 24-7. All your years. Because the last verse says, With long life, I will satisfy you and show you my salvation. He has you covered in every way. My goodness. The days we live in are bad. We got things happening, man. But God said, I want my people to shine. I want my people to be bright. It said the first, second scripture we read, His, bright, His light shall come upon you. will shine bright in these last days. But we got to believe the Word of God, yes. put it in your mouth, and let it be a sword to go out. Amen? Amen? Satan wants you to focus on people. He wants you to focus on circumstances. God wants you, God wants to show you Yeshua. With long life will I satisfy you and show him Yeshua. The, 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 our pastors have said this. This, this year... Looking unto Jesus. That's our job. Look at Jesus and everything that you do. Um, when we come to church, we should come to church to see Jesus. Amen. When we open this book, we should open this book to see Jesus. Amen. Jesus is life. He's revelation. He's bread. He's water. He's health. You know, y'all remember the story of Stephen when he was being stoned. The Bible says he looked up and he seen Jesus. <laughs> and he became like Jesus because he said, Father, forgive. I mean, yeah, he said, Father, forgive them. People, oh, my goodness. Can, I just don't know if I can say that when somebody was stoning me. But because his eyes was on Jesus, he became like who he beheld. Amen. The scripture says we beholding him be, are transformed into that image. Us in this church, the more you look at Jesus, the more you will begin to be like Jesus in every area. My goodness, I, I, I personally have changed so much. And, and don't ask me, ask my wife. She lives with me every day. I used to be grumpy and mean. I ain't quite as grumpy and mean. I, I still get there, you know, from time to time. But I'm a lot nicer. I'm a lot sweeter to her. Our relationship is a lot better. Time to time, we still argue, of course. But the more we put our focus on Jesus the more we become like Him. Amen. Amen? Seeing Jesus makes you healthy. Seeing Jesus makes you strong. And according to Psalm 91, 16, uh, seeing Jesus will give you long life. Amen? It'll give you a long life. I want to jump one scripture now. I'm going to let you go. 
And we, how many have heard this? We've heard this quoted before. And, um, that man's days are 70 or 80 years. That actually comes from Psalm 90. If you back up a psalm, it was a psalm of Moses. But you read that psalm. They were under God's wrath. 70 to 80 years is under God's wrath. Okay? Please understand this. Psalm 91 says, With long life I'll satisfy him. So, under God's wrath in the Old Covenant. Yes, 70 to 80 years. Us today, your satisfaction. Your satisfaction. Do we believe that? Your satisfaction. You, God says, till you are satisfied. Look at, look at Paul. Paul was a man that talked like he had power over death. Because he said, to go or to come, I, I, you know, it's, it's more needful if I stay here with you guys. So I think I'll stay. It's almost like he decided it was his choice whether he went or he stayed. In the new covenant, in Christ, in the secret place, it's up to your satisfaction. If you're satisfied at 80 and want to go, go. If you're satisfied at 90, go. If you want to stay another, I've, I've already told God I want to live at least 100. I won't be satisfied till I see 100 at least. Okay, so believe what God's Word says. Amen? Absolutely. Believe in the secret place. Amen. Let the sword come out of our mouths. By faith. By faith. Be restful. The beginning of the psalm said, sit down. Be restful. Trust Christ to work for you, to work through you, and to work in you as you live a life of rest. Amen. That's our job is to live a life of rest. Live a life knowing that the work is done. That Christ has accomplished everything. We're in Him. And then, how it says, work out your salvation. He finished it. And now we work. We walk out of the finished work. Not out of, but out of. Amen. If you read the book of Galatians in, in, in a whole... In, the, in a whole, okay, not just in chapters. But if you look at the book in, in a whole, the first two chapters tells you to sit down. You're seated. You have everything. It tells you what you have. The next two chapters are about standing. And the last two chapters are about walking. Sit, you can stand, and you can walk. Amen? But it starts out with resting. It starts out with seated with Christ in heavenly places. And put your focus on Him, man. Amen. Put your focus on Jesus and every single thing that you do. Amen. I'm going to let you go. But I actually, you know what? Can I do one thing and then I'll let you go? Can I get everybody to stand if you would? And let's, let's quote Psalm 91 together in closing. Amen. Brother Keith, can you put verse 1 up there? This belongs to you. It comes with the ticket. Amen. It comes with the ticket. God, He's provided this for it. every one of us. And He wants us to have it. So much that He wrote it down. Amen. So let's go. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings thou shalt trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that lay waste at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it will not come near thee. Amen. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, Neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt you trample underfoot. 
because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Hallelujah. God is such a good God. Amen. He wants us protected. Give him a hand.